a man marooned on a desert island. There he must learn to survive with only his skills and his wits to protect him. And the skills he learns on this island he will take with him and use them to fight crime and pirates and bad guys. A character that will live and be instantly recognizable to the masses. One of the most popular fictional characters of all time. And everything starting with his maroon time on that lonely island. Of course, we're talking about Robinson Crusoe. After spending 20 years on his island, the skills he learns and his insight into the geography of that island allows him to beat back a gang of vicious pirates and save the lives of innocents. Is Robinson Crusoe the original superhero? Maybe. Let's look at another example. A fan of fiction who loves the entertaining adventures of heroes seeking high adventure and battling for the rights of the innocent against villainous characters who would do them harm. Influenced by these stories, he dons a mask and cosplay to use his skill set as both a cosplayer and a fan to live out his dreams becoming an actual superhero who will right the wrongs and defend the innocent. Of course, we're talking about Don Quixote, the original cosplayer, a character so enamored with the tales of knights and chivalry that he decides to become one himself, donning the look and dress of a knight, becoming a cosplayer to fight for the rights of the innocent everywhere. Another name that will go down and be remembered throughout pop culture. Or what about a gang of vigilantes who patrol during the night using their lifelong skill set to fight off evil and protect the innocent and sometimes doing so behind the guise of law, having to actually break the law, becoming vigilantes themselves. Of course, we're talking about the Three Musketeers. Are they the original superheroes? Well, I think you see the point that I'm making is that comic books are highly influenced by fine literature. The adventure literature from the last 300 plus years has had such a huge influence on our modern comic book superhero that the tropes they create often become lost in the originality. Let's look at one superhero in particular. Batman. Or rather, Batman as he was originally created. A lot of people know the story of Bill Finger and Bob Kane, and how both of them together created Batman, taking him from a red knight to a black knight. But what if I told you that's not the creator of Batman at all? What if I told you that there was a woman who created Batman? who's often not linked to the story of the Dark Knight and how her tales completely influenced Batman's look, secret identity, secret lair, and more. You may not even know who she is or recognize her. Well, you probably recognize this guy, right? Come on, hands up. How many people know this face? Everyone, right? He's Mr. Stan Lee, the man who, responsible for creating, essentially, the Marvel Universe. People know him around the world. Well, I personally know him as the man who tried to steal my newspaper at San Diego Comic-Con one year, but that's a story for another time. Now, do you recognize this man? Well, he created a character just as famous. Yes, Bob Kane. This is the man who created Batman. Now, he may not be as recognizable to you the way Stan Lee is. I mean, I suppose if I show you this shot, you might be more able to recognize him as the creator of Batman. And a lot of people know the story of how the original version of Batman he created on his own was a little bit different. Wasn't quite the Dark Knight that we've all come to know and love. Had a bright red outfit, black wings that doubled as a cape, and a Zorro mask. Well, a cool character in his own, but why was he wearing a red outfit? 
Well, this red outfit was changed by this man, Bill Finger. And again, this is not a YouTube video about the differences between Bill Finger and Bob Kane's ability to come together and create the Batman character we all know and love. That is a tale that's been told in countless videos, novels, short stories, etc., how their ideas came together to create the character we all know and love. But if you take a step back and you look at that original version that Bob Kane did, the red-shirted vigilante in the Zorro mask, taking away everything that Bill Finger added, like the car and the gray mask, well, you have to start to ask yourself, where did the origin and the influence for this original version of Batman come from? The one decked out in scarlet with bat wings attached to the back. Now, of course, a lot of people know about the pulp influence, specifically a character called the Black Bat. And one of the biggest influences of this character, not just the color scheme, but it was the gloves. It was the... Uh, the rivets coming out of the gloves that wound up being used in the final illustration for Batman and became one of Batman's signature identifying pieces. But again, today we're not going to talk about the Black Bat and his influences. We're going to talk about these influences, or rather, this influence. This woman here. All right, try a third time. We got Stan Lee, probably a lot of you got Bob Kane, but who can tell me who this lovely lady is in this Victorian photograph? Anyone? Well, this is the Baroness Oxy, and she is the author of a book series known as the Scarlet Pimpernel. You've probably heard of it, right? Somewhere in the back of your mind. Maybe some of you read it in high school, or you're familiar with the Looney Tunes character that was influenced by this. Well, let me tell you a little bit about this story. It's one of my favorite book series of all time. Aside from being a toy fan and a comic book fan, I am a fan of classic adventure literature. Well, the Scarlet Pimpernel shares a lot of things with Batman. He has a secret identity. And not just any secret identity, his identity as a fop, as kind of a rich fool about town that spends his money and womanizes. Hmm, that definitely sounds slightly familiar. Where have I seen that kind of concept before? In fact, there'd never been a secret identity before Scarlet Pimpernel. He also, in his alter ego, wears a mask and cloak, fighting crime from behind the scenes and in shadows. Well, that definitely sounds completely original and something that's never been done before. Yep, another trope that became a big part of Batman's identity wearing a mask and fighting crime in an alter identity so that people didn't know who he truly was. How about being a master of weapons, knowing how to use a sword just as well as gadgets and gears, having years of training in order to use it to fight against crime? Well, yeah, that's another thing Batman does. Or how about a instantly recognizable symbol that sends fear into the criminal elements around town and is recognized by those who want good and just. Oh, yeah, Batman also has that. Hmm. Okay, well, how about a secret cave hidden in your house that has secret plans and maps and information that will help you solve crimes that people can't find and... Oh yeah, Batman also has a secret cave in the back of his house that has all of his secret plans. Okay, okay, but, but Batman does not dress in red and have a bright scarlet outfit identifying himself as a... Oh, wait, the original version of Batman did dress in red. Well, yeah, you see, The Scarlet Pimpernel was one of Bob Kane's favorite books. And there's a reason why all of these elements from the Scarlet Pimpernel wound up in the creation of The Dark Knight. As I mentioned, the Scarlet Pimpernel is not a one-and-done book. It is a whole series by the Baroness, and each book continues along with the last, building up a very strong continuity, telling the story 
of a man with a secret identity, who has a secret cave, who wears a mask and disguises, has a symbol recognized by both good and evil alike as a symbol of justice. And, of course, he has a secret identity as a fop about town, which was done so well in the 1970s movie. You should definitely check it out. If you're not already reading The Scarlet Pimpernel or checking out that film, it is awesome. And there's definitely a clear connection to Batman. So if you're a comic book fan or a fan of high adventure and, well, you're looking for something to read while we're all at home doing social distancing, I highly suggest The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Arxy. It's an amazing series. The movies are amazing. The serials are amazing. And it'll give you a lot of good insight into the origins and themes that went into so many of our favorite comic book characters and heroes. If you like this video and you want to see more like this, taking a look at how classic literature influenced pop culture today, subscribe today. Let me know in the comments below, and I'd love to keep them coming. See you guys around the internet.